Gary Brown from Tackle Tactics here. This time I'm going to take you through the gang talks. What I do with my gang talks, right, I keep them in a box. And on the box I've got 4x4, 3x4, 2x2, 2x1, 2x2. Right, that means that I've got 4 four O's, 3 four O's, 2 two O's, 2 one O's, and 2 two O's. It just depends on the size of the bait that you're going to use. In this case, I'm using the WA Pilchard, and I'm going to get out, right, out of here, three 4 o hooks. Now what I've done is I've used a bread tie, and I've tied them together, so that when they go into the box, as you see here, they don't all get mixed up. That means that you can get them out easier. And what you have is four four O's, not three four O's. What you do is you attach the line to the top by using your favourite knot that you have. In my case, it's the penguin's noose, or another name for it is uni knot. Well, you might want to use a lock blood knot, but I find nice and quick and nice and easy. You could have that where you have a sinker, ball sinker, run down onto the top of that, or you could have that going back up and having a short or a long leader to where you have a swivel above it. You have a sinker, fishy off the beach or off the rocks for tailor, salmon, bonito, the likes. So in this case, I'm going to rig it so that when I cast it out, I'm bringing the pilchard in this way, because that's the way it's going to swim. So it's a matter of what you've got to do is you've got to line the hooks up so that that top hook will go through the eye of the fish. And you'll notice that this one here, when it eventually get in there, it's not going to go into anything. Right, see how it sticks out the back? That's fine. So you line up the first one. Twist. Put the second one in. Put the final one in through the eye. So that they sit. Like so. And this last one here swings around. So it acts like a stinger hook. And what happens is that when you're bringing that through the water, right, the tailor or the bonito will come up, whack it, grab it from the tail, right, and get hooked up on that swinging hook, or get hooked up in here. You need to make sure when you put the hooks in, that the hooks actually come out, the hook points, that is, come out, as is shown here, rather than buried into the bait. In the case of the other one, what I've got is another set once again done up with the twist. Tying it off how you require, depending on the knot that you want to use, in my case the uni knot or the hangman's noose, I find it's quick and easy, it's just something that I've always done since I was a young kid. Usually do four or five turns, pull it up, a bit of moisture on it, cut off the tag, and in this case, what's going to happen? is that I'm going to rig the fish so that it sits that way. The first one goes through the eye, second one through the body. Third one through there, 
the top one sits out here. In this case, I wouldn't cast it and retrieve it back in because the fish would be going backwards. In this case, what I do is I throw it out to the back of the boat or just off the shore into the current and let it drift down the current. This is one of the ones that I use for chasing snapper in the Burley Trail, Big Trevally in the Burley Trail. And the reason I've got this other one floating around the back here is that tailor tend to come up and bite the back end of the, the bait off. So I have this one here so it's free swinging around so that in case the tailor comes up and grabs hold of that. Not a bad rig. Remember, this one you don't cast out and retrieve back in. So there you have it, two ways of rigging a pilchard. One where you would throw it out, retrieve it back in. The other one where you would throw it out the back of the boat or off the rocks or off the wharf and just let it float down with the current.